How you doing, fam bam? And everybody out there, happy holidays. More than likely, you probably just got a brand new PC and you don't know exactly what to do with it. Matter of fact, you're probably thinking, now what? What else can I do with a gaming PC? Well, therefore, got some great accessories that I do have to recommend if you have a gaming PC. It is a must have. Maybe it's not even a gaming PC. Maybe you use it more for content creation. And that's okay because a lot of these recommendations that I will share with you may relate or may not relate with you. Bam Bam guys, if you need help with any of the products that I do mention, make sure you check down in the description box down below because I have quite a few listed down there that can help you get started on your PC gaming rig or your PC content creation rig. Now, the first thing I do gotta recommend, whether you're using it for gaming or content creation, is you have to have a upgraded keyboard. More than likely, the PC that you have, especially if it's a pre-built PC, you get that really mushy keyboard. It responds very nasty, and every time you press the keys on it, it just feels very soft. What I usually recommend is to get something more of a upgraded keyboard. If you have a mechanical keyboard, it will respond right away. And not only that, it is a much more durable compared to a membrane keyboard, which is more of the mushy feeling keyboard. Now they do have different tiers of mechanical keyboards. You do have Cherry MX. There is a Blue MX, there is all different colors that signify for what type of keys that you are looking for your keyboard, especially if you're looking more of durability use and if you're looking more to game on a keyboard and mouse. Now, they do have optical switches, which is a little bit more soft, but it is super responsive. So a keyboard is something I highly recommend if you're looking for something that is a little bit more softer than mechanical. I do recommend OPX keyboards such as a Corsair K100 keyboard where, is, where it uses optical switches. The newer Razer keyboards also use optical switches and this is specifically for gaming use. Now, if you aren't using it for gaming, that's okay. Maybe you want a decent keyboard or more of a pro blind keyboard where you use it more for things like Lightroom and Premiere. And they do have very specific keyboards for that where you can adjust your settings much more easier compared to just using a mouse. My number one recommendation for everybody out there who just had recently got a PC for Christmas or just had finished building a PC is to get a keyboard. Of course, number two thing is you could probably guess what it already is. And that's going to be a mouse. I highly recommend a decent mouse, especially if you're gonna use it more for the gaming side or even just for the professional side. When you do upgrade your mouse, you will have much more buttons on your mouse to mess with. Now your typical mouse that comes with say a pre-built PC, if you did receive one or maybe you just got one that came with your PC, is it's gonna be two typical buttons on there, which is gonna be the left click and right click. You may have a middle mouse button, but what I would recommend is a more upgraded mouse because you want something that give you more accuracy when you are using it for games such as FPS, or maybe you need something to move a little bit quicker. Sure, you can adjust what's called the DPI on your PC, but it will not compare to something like a Hero Sensor that you get from a Logitech G502 mouse. Corsair also makes great mice, and so does Razer. They also make great mice as well. Now, the reason why I would recommend to upgrade your mouse, and even if it's not for gaming use, is again, you can program your other keys for other functions, such as copy, paste, or maybe you want to go back and forward on a browser. Very simple functions, or you can even upgrade it to something more as uh, intricate as a macro. Such as if you're working on something as Premiere, cutting out a, a transition, or maybe you want to create a transition with your mouse. And that is a very important function, especially like when it is say a Logitech MX, which it can really easily do. Or if you want to use it for gaming purposes, when I use for my Lightspeed G502 mouse, what I usually set it to is I'll set my grenades on the side of the mouse where it has four different buttons. Now the four different buttons, I have it for reload, I have it for 
uh, melee, and I also have it for tactical, and I also have it for grenade use. You're able to use all your mouse functions with just the side of your thumb compared to trying to find the key on your keyboard. So that's one of the, the recommendations I also have to recommend is getting a mouse for your PC. Another thing I gotta recommend, and this isn't so much for the content creators out there. This is more for the people that use their PC for gaming. Now you have your gaming PC and maybe you aren't such a fanatic when it comes into mouse and keyboard, or maybe you just wanna get to something familiar. So hopefully you already have a controller, but if you don't, that is another thing that I would recommend. Now it is great to play with a keyboard and mouse and everything, but the issue comes to action adventure games, a Lord of the Fallen, because it would be much more difficult playing on a keyboard and mouse. Final Fantasy would be a little annoying playing on a keyboard and mouse, the newer ones anyway, where it isn't turn-based. Now, I would recommend highly to get a Xbox controller, which is a very simple controller that you can hook up for your Windows PC and is not too expensive. Typically, you can purchase it for $59.99, and hopefully you can get it and sell for $39.99, but that is the more lower tier controller that I would recommend to get for your PC. But if you wanna go all out, you can go for something like the Envision Pro, which I highly recommend. And it is definitely a top tier controller, and it will also make you realize why uh, PC gaming is so good. It has side action buttons, and on the back of it, it has two different paddles where it is behind the controller. It is completely customizable. You can set different macros on there even. It is a wonderful controller and it lasts plenty long for any type of gaming usage. Now with the Xbox controller, it is also Bluetooth or you can hook it up through the adapter. Now when it comes to Corsair's Envision Pro or Scuf's Envision Pro, you do have to use a radio frequency USB that it does come with. Now, another recommended controller I can recommend to you is the DualSense controller. It does work great for PC. The DualSense Edge also works great for PC. Only problem is you need to have a PlayStation 5 in order to program the macros. Now, there is other programs that you can try to start to mess with and adjust the macros that way, but I would just recommend the standard DualSense where it is $69.99. Now, it doesn't last as long as the Xbox controller, but it is super responsive when you are gaming on a dual sense controller. Another thing I do gotta recommend, which is number four, is you have to have a high refresh rate monitor. More than likely, if you just got a PC, you probably don't have a monitor to hook it up to, or maybe you're just hooking it up to your TV temporarily. You gotta get a monitor. Don't look for TVs out there because they will not be as quick as a low latency monitor. Now, look, the reason why you need a monitor is a lot of TVs, they don't go under 10 milliseconds. Most monitors out there can go under one millisecond, which is super responsive, great for competitive players out there. Now, if you love to play games such as Call of Duty or competitive first person shooters, maybe you're more of a Counter-Strike 2 player and now you wanna get more involved in games such as that. Now, there is a different variation types of monitors out there. For example, as you see, I have ultra wide monitors, which is great for multitasking, also great for gaming, also great for simulation, but maybe you're more competitive and ultra wide might not fit those categories for you, which is perfectly fine. There is also other monitors out there, which is a 16.9, about two, a little bit over 2K resolution, but you will have a quick refresh rate of up to 240 Hertz. They even have monitors up there where it goes up to 480 Hertz, which will give you the competitive edge that you need. And you'll be seeing things way before any type of console player would see in their console. Your reaction time will be much more quicker and you will realize that that is going to give you the competitive edge when it comes to gaming. There is LCD monitors, there is LED monitors, there is also VA display monitors, which a lot of people don't personally like, great for gaming, but then a lot of people don't like the ghosting look effect. I will have a list down in the description box down below. If you have any questions about monitors, feel free to ask right down below and I can give you an idea of what you could be looking for. Number five, I gotta recommend to you is getting a decent headset. 
Now you have a PC, you can go wired, you can go Bluetooth, you can go wireless. There is different categories when it comes to headsets. Personally for me, I have a Sennheiser 363D headset that is hooked up to an Astro Mixamp Pro. Now I've had it for over 10 years and that just gives you an idea why quality is so important when it comes to headsets. Now, if you choose to go a wired route, I do highly recommend getting a Mixamp Pro and then hooking up a wired headset to it where, where you can even create your own headset, which there is so many different variations out there. Wireless is getting just as good. One of my personal favorite ones that I've used wirelessly was the Black Shark Pro version two, which is the 2023 editions they, that, that they do have. And there is also another great headset out there with these large drivers, which is the Audis Maxwell, which has 90 millimeter drivers in the headset. It has plenty of battery life usage, over 80 hours of usage, and it makes you feel you are in game. You won't miss the footsteps that are running right behind you. You could turn around right before the player can react to your action. So that is something that I would recommend. Get a decent headset. If you do use a Premiere or if you're more into video editing, also get a decent uh, headset out there. Sennheisers are great. Uh, Bear Dynamics are also great. There are different types of levels for you audiophiles out there when it comes to headsets because you do not want to hear any crackles, pops, or anything when you are editing. So you wanna make sure you get a decent connection with your headset and you want to have the clearest connection possible to your ears. So a headset is also highly recommended when you do get a PC. A speakers, I wouldn't recommend them as much. That is more of, a, you can get speakers for your PC if you want more dynamic sound, but I wouldn't really recommend it as much as having a decent pair of headsets because you will not miss whether you're editing or gaming. Another major component that you have, which is number six, that which I would recommend is get a backup drive. It would really suck to have everything that you have installed in your PC, all your saved games. Sure, you have cloud storage now where all your games save into the cloud, but it doesn't always save into the cloud like they say. There's been plenty of times where I went into games such as Baldur's Gate 3 and my saved file wasn't there. So what I would recommend for everybody out there to get is get a decent backup drive. Now, you may not need a super large drive. Don't go crazy and get a 10 terabyte drive. You're not gonna need all that space unless you are some sort of, uh, you're using your PC more for content creation or maybe you do photos and videos, that's great and all. Then I would recommend getting, getting a backup drive that large. But if you're more of a standard gamer, I would just recommend getting something such as a one terabyte or two terabyte drive backup. And you just use, you could use Microsoft's program itself to back up your storage drive, or you can even use programs that are out there in order to back up your drive. I do highly recommend something like a Kronos image backup. Macrium is also a great backup image uh, a program as well. It used to be free, but not so much. They only give you a 30 day trial for both of these programs. But Microsoft is completely free. You still can back up your drives with Microsoft as well. Number seven, I gotta recommend to you guys out there who are just building their your PCs is to get an expandable drive because more than likely your pre-built PC may not come with a lot of storage. If you're lucky, you got two terabytes of storage but most people out there may have only about one terabyte of storage, get an expandable NVMe. Now there are different uh, speeds out there depending on the type of build that you have, which you will learn more about your PC, which I would highly recommend to figure out what type of PC that you have. Now, if you have an Intel 12th generation or higher, more than likely you can get speeds of NVMe, PCI Express 5.0, which is great. Then you can install something that is up to over 10,000 megabytes per second in speed. You don't really need that speed, especially if you're not gonna use it for editing or anything like that. Games don't currently go up that high in speed just quite yet. They are using more direct storage, which is what currently what Xbox uses and PC is trying to get more involved into direct storage, which can help loading speeds, which can be a much better process when it comes for gaming. 
Now, if you want to prepare for that, you can. If you have an Intel 12th generation processor, which is anything that's a 12600K and up to say a 14900K, all those processors in between, more than likely you have a motherboard that can support PCI Express 5.0. Now, if you have AMD, anything that's over a 7000 series processor, anything above that, say a 7600X, all the way up to a 7950X 3D, you more than likely have a motherboard that supports PCI Express 5.0. Now, if you have anything that's under that, don't fright, you won't even notice the difference between PCI Express 5.0. You can get a PCI Express 4.0 drive. They do have plenty of drives out there for great deals. Make sure you check down in the description box down below because you do not want to have all your games all your saved files, everything to get to full. Client that you will use when you are gaming, such as Steam, will allow you to other games that you do want to install on your PC. So I highly recommend to do that. Get a expandable drive, and that will save you a lot of headache in the near future. And number eight, I gotta recommend this to everybody out there, is increase your RGBs. Maybe you got a PC, a pre-built PC, and you don't have any flash to it. Maybe it's just boring. There's no lights on the PC. Well, don't worry. You can install RGBs into your PC. It's really easy to do. Not hard at all to do. I usually recommend Corsair's RGBs because they are the most functioning and easiest to work with. And especially if you have a pre-built PC, more than likely you're not going to have a RGB headers on your motherboard that comes with that pre-built PC. And Corsair will allow you to install RGBs on your PC because they will have IQ Link, or maybe you will use IQ's Lighting Node where you're able to use RGBs. You don't have to use a manual remote in order to change the lighting of your PC. And if that sounds all too familiar, more than likely, you probably have a pre-built PC. Now, I do have a list of Corsair RGB products I can recommend to you just to start off with. But that is something I would highly recommend, especially if you want to bring your own personality to your PC. Bam Bam guys, if you need help with any of the products that I do mention, make sure you check down in the description box down below because I have quite a few listed down there that can help you get started on your PC gaming rig. Bam Bam guys, I hope you found this very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who needs to know exactly what to do to their PC, Make sure you share this video with them. And also, if not part of the big one of fan band, make sure you get down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell for more. For all the newest updates, make sure you follow my X handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Fan band, guys, if you need help with any of the parts or if you want to get an idea on how to get started with your PC, feel free to comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.